listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning, good morning, good morning, all my Gwinnettes out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It is a... It's a cloudy day here in Gwinnett County. It's really cloudy, y'all. It's 59 degrees, going up to a high of 63. Now, throughout the day, no chance of rain. But later on this evening, we got a 40% chance of rain, and it's really cloudy. I'm like, man, it's so dark this morning. Uh, But it's a dark morning today anyway. So I know you guys have probably heard by now, um, Marvelous Marvin Hagler passed away on Saturday. And um, he was in my family. He was a member of my family. He's actually my daughter's grandfather. And once again, my family has taken a huge blow. And um, thank you to everybody who showed us some love on Facebook. That was, that was, that was my mom, you know, she got sick. We we were able to hold on to her for nine days. This happened instantly. He was, he was home and um, he was in the kitchen and he had a, a heart attack. And so, you know, my family, my, my, my condolences go out to his wife, Kay, um, and to the rest of the Hagler family and um, my daughter, man, she was so broken. And, and it was crazy, you know, because she got the – my heart – let me tell you all something. I have not been right since my mother passed away because it has been so much death around me and so unexpectedly and in such crazy ways. So I haven't been right since then. Like, I, I'm always on pins and needles, which is not a good thing. It's, it, it, physically and mentally and emotionally, it's not a good thing. Like I'm, I'm always, when I see it, I could be driving down the street and see like flashing lights and I instantly wonder where everybody is, where the kids, are they home? Where's my brother? Is he home? Where, you know, and I'm, con- and I find myself constantly doing that. It's like I'm living in a state of fear and I know I have to get past that, but ever since my mom passed, I, I haven't been able to shake that part. I haven't been able to shake that whole, you know, thing of something happening and I'm so nervous all the time and, um, <laughs> So when I got this call, it, it was no better. You know, when I'm sitting, I'm we're, we're in my room talking, we're in my bedroom talking, and she gets a phone call, and I'm looking at her face, and I'm waiting for her to, you know, I'm thinking maybe it's like somebody saying something, you know, stupid, you know. So I'm looking at her face, but her face never, her face never go to like get out of here. It never goes to that face. It's just this serious face. And then I hear her, I see her shake her head, and so my first thing, my first thought was, oh God, something's wrong with the baby because the baby wasn't with us. The baby was with her father. And I'm like, oh, God. So my heart instantly started beating so fast I couldn't hardly breathe. And I was like, what? And she's like, wait a minute, Mom, wait a minute. And so as she said that, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. And um, it was her aunt telling her that her grandfather had passed away. And then she just fell out screaming. And I was like, what happened? What happened? She said, my my, my grandfather passed away. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I, then I'm shaking. Like, I, my hands are shaking. It's nervous. I'm trying to call somebody. I'm calling my husband. I'm calling my brother. And my nephew had just left the house. And, and as I'm calling my brother, my nephew is at his house. And he's like, Marvin passed away. He's like, no, nah, I just left him over there. Because he had literally just left my house. And so, you know, it's, this is, I tell y'all, I say this all the time. Life can be short. Um, it doesn't all, it's not always show up for a lot of people, but it can be short. Marvin was only 66 years old. He was young. You know, he still had a lot of life left in him. And just to know that he, and he, he comes home. So what happens is he comes home to, he has a house in New Hampshire. He lives in Italy, Milan. And every year he comes home two or three times a year, um, just to be in the States so he can see everybody. And my daughter had talked to him on Wednesday and she and the baby were planning to go go up to New Hampshire to the house. She's been doing that since she was a little girl. Like since a little girl, she would go to New Hampshire to the house and spend time with him. And, um, that was a plan to take the baby back up because the baby went up there last year. I think, no year before last, um, she went up to the house and the plan was to take the baby back last year, but then Corona hit. And so they didn't get to do that trip because everybody got kind of stuck. They got stuck in Italy and, 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 but that was the plan. And then the plan was to go up this week, um, go up, uh, in April, because Kay's birthday is in April, Marvin's birthday is in May, so she said she was going to go in the middle to kind of celebrate both of their birthdays with the baby, and, you know, she never got a chance to do that, but that was the plan, you know, and so, um, and that's something she's been doing since she was a little girl, like, I took her, we went up there when she was, like, three, and it's so crazy, Georgette, because um, they bought her a bike when she was, like, she might have been, I think she was three, the bike is still there, mm-hmm. 
And when she took <laughs> Carter up to the to the house, I said to her, "Is your bike still there?" She's like, "My bike is still here." And she took a picture with Carter on the bike, <laughs> on her bike when she was three. So that's a long time. Mm-hmm. And so she has a picture with Carter on the bike, and you know, it's just it's so sad. You know, we know that death yeah. is a part of life, and life is a part of yeah. death, but it doesn't make it any less nope. painful. You know, and when it's so unexpected, it doesn't, it's just, you just get caught off guard. And then with the whole Corona thing, it just, that just adds another layer of just like, oh my God, to the whole situation. So, um, right now, I don't know what the services are going to be or if they're going to, you know, what I can tell y'all about Marvin, he did not like funerals. That's what I can tell you. So, um, I'm not expecting Mm. a funeral because he didn't like them. And that's, I know that for a fact. And, um, but we will miss him. And um, my daughter talked to him every week, sometimes twice a week. And I know mm-hmm. that breaks her heart. And just like when yeah. I lost my mom, it broke her heart. It broke my heart. And, you know, it's just scary because every time I, every time I've lost somebody. And so in the last year, we've lost five people. Mm-hmm. Like that's a lot of folks, y'all. I've never lost that many people in my family at one time, like that in the span of a year. Not, not like that. You know, and this is old cliche saying, like this old folks saying, like when people die, they die in threes. Well, I'm at a year and we at five. So that, that has broken all those rules. But, um, you know, my prayers go out to Kay, the prayer go out to the rest of the Hagler family, um, to Gentry, who is, is my daughter's dad, Gentry Hagler prayers and, and my condolences go out to everybody. And, you know, it's rough, but we will all get through this once again, once again. And I, you know, it's so funny cause I just, one, I feel like I'm taking two mm-hmm. steps forward, and then pain hits me right. again. I take two <laughs> steps forward, then pain hits me again. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not expecting any more pain. I'm expecting nothing but happiness moving forward. I'm not, I'm not going to be so stressed out every time I hear a siren or the news come on. I don't even watch the news. I don't somebody even watch you. somebody call. I, don't, I my niece told me she sent me something on social media. I'm so not on social media like that, y'all. Like, I've probably been on Facebook more in the last day than I probably did in the last year. Because I'm just, it's just, it's always bad news. Like, Facebook is just full of bad news to me. You know, um, one of my mother's longtime friends passed away, like, a couple of days before Marvin. You know, my brother's like, what is going on? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You know, my, 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 um... Her friend became my mother's friend, daughter, and I became friends. I think I told y'all about us growing up on 19th Street in Newark and um, living in a six-family house. Well, they lived on the second floor. We lived on the third floor, and they lived on our side on the second floor. And so um, rest in heaven, um, Marvin, rest in heaven, Naomi. Um, mm. Hey, you joined the rest of the angels who who we've lost this year. Grandma, my husband's grandmother, Naomi, she mm-hmm. passed away earlier this uh, this month. And so, you know, I just got back from the funeral. Like, it was yeah. like, oh, my God. My suitcase was still in my room sitting. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, not again. So it's just, it's it's hard, y'all. It's hard. It's hard to lose so many people you love so close together like that. It's like you don't even have time to heal mm-hmm. before somebody really? else, yeah. you know, has gone. So this has been this has definitely been something serious. And ooh, I don't know what's going on. You know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I just know it's a lot. It's a lot. Anyway, let's get on with our yeah, show. So today is National Shoe the World Day, like shoes. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that means. And it's also National Pears Helene Day. That sounds delicious. I don't know what that is either. Pears Helene. It's some kind of, look like a dessert. It's that day. So that's what the day is. So National Pears Helene Day and National Shoe the World. I have no idea what that means. Does that mean you shoe? Can, you, shoe. Provide shoe? I don't like know. A, like a shoe. Yeah, like a shoe. Okay. I have no Maybe idea. It's like provide shoes to people or something. I don't know. I right. can do that now. I can. I got some shoes that yeah. hurt my toe. Brand new. I bought them. Like they're so cute, and I cannot wear them because they hurt. So if I need yeah. to go and give somebody a pair of shoes, I got some. Well, shoe the world. Then. Shoe the world. That's what it sounds like. Okay. Thanks for the clarity because I had I'm no just, idea. I'm just. <laughs> no I'm <idea>. trying here. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do our horoscopes so Julia can give us the word of the week. So we're going to do our horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen for today. Today is, what is the day? The 15th of March? Yeah. We're in the middle. We're in the middle of the, listen, it's about mm-hmm. to be, it's about to be April, y'all. It's about to be April. Crazy. Today is Monday, March the 15th. We're going to do our horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Michael Thyssen. We're going to kick it off like we always do. And that is with Aries. 
Check your project over carefully if you were not the only one contributing to the end result. Avoid letting children and friends borrow. Emotional matters may not be as easy to handle for you to handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Check your project over carefully if you were not the only one contributing um, to the end result. Because here's the thing. Somebody may have made a mistake, and then you're going to get the blame. So if it's you and somebody else on the project, check it over. Make sure you catch any problems. That way it runs smoothly, and you don't get the blame for something that got messed up. Taurus. You could catch. You should catch up on correspondence. You need some rest. Business trips may prove unproductive. You need some rest, Taurus. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. You need some rest. I'm just saying. You are doing too, too much. All right, Gemini. Romantic, a romantic dinner followed by a quiet evening with the one who is enticing you should be most satisfying. Okay. Okay, now. You can make headway in your workforce if you put your mind to it. You need a job with more responsibility and a higher wage. All right, so you can do some. Now, listen, I don't know where you are in your, in your position at work, but maybe you need a new position in that in that, in that company that's going to give you more responsibility and more money. If not, you may want to think about moving on. But in the meantime, enjoy the romantic dinner. Sounds sexy. Yes, it does. Cancer. New romantic relationships we develop, will develop through group activity related to sports events. <laughs> I got to tell y'all a story about that. You may find that relationships are not going as well as you'd like. Mm. Travel could turn out to be more exciting than you imagine. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. So I went to, I was having a conversation with a cancer yesterday, right? About that very thing right there, the sports events. And I said to her, I said, listen, let me tell you something. You got to go where the dudes are, you know, get involved. You got to get, cause they don't do a lot of stuff. They're not very, they go to nice places to eat and things like that. I was like, you got to get out and volunteer, volunteer to help the children out. You love kids and they love you volunteer. So my brother, of course, is a coach, both he and my nephew are coaches and my other nephew plays football. And so I said to them, I said, take uncle candy for instance. That's my brother. We call him candy. That's his nickname for life. Take uncle candy. For instance, he's a coach. What's around him? Coaches. What's around coaches? Parents. Why? Because they got kids. I said, and it's a bunch of them. I said, you got uncles like me. I'm an aunt. So you got uncles who go to the games, right? So this is what I'm telling them. I said, so go to the football games. You'll see a bunch of people. Well, we went to see my nephew do a seven on seven yesterday with Cam Newton. And when we pulled up, she was like, oh my God, it was buses and buses and buses. And I said to her, I told you, (laughs) I told you football, baby, football. You looking for a dude? Go where he at football fields. I'm just saying, I just want to throw that out there to all my cancers. Your horoscope says. New romantic relations will develop through group activity related to sports. I don't know. It may not be football for you, but I'm just saying. She was like, oh, my God. And let me tell you something, Georgia. You can tell the chicks are coming looking because everybody look bootylicious. I was like, look. And she's like, oh. I said, yeah, because they already know. This is where they are. So we looking bootylicious out here. Yes. Looking bootylicious. It was crazy. It was so funny. I mean, just letting it all hang out, shaking and shimmering, baby. And she, I was like, oh I told you. God. And of course, the dudes out there, they looking. They got the mask on, looking over the top of the mask. I'm, I'm cracking up, like I told you. Oh, Hilarious. Okay. But you know, here's the thing: <laughs> she loves kids, and kids love her. And so, and, yeah. and parents love anybody that love their kids in in sports. I don't care what it is, soccer. Like you know, we went to the football field Friday. Was it Friday? Yeah, we took the baby Friday. Was it Friday or was it Saturday morning? It was Saturday morning, actually. So we went to the football field Saturday morning where my brother was, and he was doing some volunteer work, signing kids up. And we saw these little kids. They were like Carter's eight playing soccer. It was a bunch of them. I was like, look, they're the same no. size. Yeah, you had to see it, G. But it was a ton of parents out there with the kids playing. Yeah. And they were little no, bitty kids like stuff. Carter. And I said, people love their mm-hmm. kids. I said, they love their kids, and they want to put them in sports, and that's a good thing. So you and you're gonna meet people when you start. When you put card in sports, you're gonna meet a lot of parents. You're gonna make new friends and things like that. But you got to get out there. So and his to anybody, you got to get out the house. Like you can't sit in the house and expect to meet somebody. It's not gonna happen unless you meet them online. And that could happen because I've heard it happen. Leo, your talents might be. Might just be discovered. Lack of funds may add stress to your already uncertain situation. Don't believe everything you hear. 
Yeah, listen, this old saying, don't believe any of what you hear and only part of what you see. Yes, that's an old saying. So, Leo, don't believe it. Don't believe everything you hear because somebody probably lying to you. I'm just trying to help you out. Me and Michael. Virgo, there may be opportunities to attend social functions that are linked to work. Ask those in key positions to help you overcome the delays and to support your concerns in order to move on. If you're feeling uncertain, spend some time alone and reevaluate your motives as well as your needs. Yeah, if you're feeling uncertain, Sagittarius, sometimes you just got to spend some time by yourself in a quiet place just to reevaluate. You reevaluate why you do what you do and what exactly is that you need. Here's the other thing, too. A lot of times we don't even, we, we think we need stuff. We think we want stuff until we actually get it. And you're like, oh my God, do I really want that? Do I really need that? So you might just want to spend some time alone, reevaluate your mind. Because something happened to me. It was weird to y'all. I can't tell y'all what it was because it was too re- weird. But. I could tell you, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go check this out. And then the opportunity presented itself. And I'm like, I ain't doing that. But, <laughs> but up until that point, it was like, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to check it out. And then it, it jumped right in my face. I'm talking about literally. And I was like, yeah, I ain't doing that. But up until that point, oh, I was doing it. I'm getting it in. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to this thing. Nah. When it showed up for me, I was like, nope, not doing it. It was hilarious. I had to laugh at myself. Because I was like, up until then, I was doing it. I was going, you know, we're going to get it. We're going to go do this thing. And it said, here I am. And I was like, yeah, not going to happen. Not going to happen. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm going to a song, Georgia, and I'll be right back. Stay tuned, y'all. I wake up on Sunday morning. Feel the ache inside my heart. Welcome back. It's your girl, Audrey Bell Kearney, giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Mike Athias. We're going to pick it up with Libra. You must try to help. Your efforts won't go unnoticed. However, someone you work with may be jealous. 
Oh, oh, oh. Deception is evident around you. Yeah, watch your back, Libra. Watch your back. People are watching you, and you got some jealous people. They got they trying to stick some knives in your back. It's all around you, so watch it. Pay attention. Scorpio, your identical, your intellectual wit will bring greater, op, greater popularity with your peers. Things will be in motion with your mate. Family members will not be happy with the amount of time you are spending away from home. Why are you spending so much time away from home, Scorpio? Are you working? What you doing? They're not happy with it. Watch it now, especially if you're in a relationship. Watch it. I'm just saying. Yeah, you got some things that's going to be emotional with your mate. They're feeling a little bit like they need some time. What you doing? Sagittarius. Feeling under the weather may be a result of overindulgence. What you overindulging in? Too much of anything is not good. I don't care what it is. You should get into programs that will enhance your appearance and help you to be the best you can be. Don't let your personal problems interfere with your professional responsibilities. Yeah, I know me. I'm always talking about being the best you can be. Live your best life. Be the best you can be. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you this. And I'm, I'm going to finish. I ain't going to go too long, but I got to tell you this. The one thing I've learned over the last year from losing so many people is that life is short. And here's what I know. You need to take care of the one body that you have, and you need to prepare to live life. I cannot wait till I can go places. Because here's what happened. I worked a lot, right, to the point where I wouldn't go anywhere and do anything. They couldn't, the people want me to go on vacation, I would go, you know, not, 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 not now. Not now. When God make it safe for us to just move about freely, like really freely, oh, your girl going to be out. I'll be telling you stories all the time. I'm going to be out. Because I realized, you know, I get one life to live. I'm going to take care of this body that God has blessed me with, and I'm going to enjoy my life. So, Sagittarius, take care of yourself. Whatever you whatever you got to do to make yourself the best you can you can be, then do that. And don't forget to live. Don't forget to live, Sag, because life is short. I know I'm I'm guilty. I'm guilty of working like a workaholic. I'm so guilty. Not this year, y'all. Not after all the stuff I've been through, and I'm and I just went through it again Saturday. That was a that was a terrible blow to lose Marvin. You know, um, and so suddenly, you know, my daughter was she was just broke. She's like, Nah, I just talked to him. She just talked to him. She's like, I just talked to him on Wednesday. No, this can't be happening. And nobody wants to see their kids hurt and be in pain. Nobody. I don't care who it is. Anyway, Capricorn, get back into a routine that promises a better looking, more aware individual. Okay, what kind of routine is that, Capricorn? You are best not to discuss your personal life with others. Don't exaggerate. Don't lie. Don't lie, Capricorn. If you listen, first of all, keep your vision to yourself. And when you do talk, don't exaggerate. That just means don't tell lies, because that's what that's what that means. That's a, that's a nice way of saying it. Because you're lying. If you got to exaggerate anything, it's a lie. I, I don't know. It, do you feel like that, Judge? Because I don't know. Maybe it's just me to feel like that. Over exaggeration. Exaggerate yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't have to. I mean, no. You, I know. You know, what's the point? I just, why, why do you why do you need to exaggerate stuff? Right. If you if you did it, you did it, right? You don't right. have to be like, oh, I did it fifty thousand times better. That's a lie, right? So that and to me, yeah, if you got exactly. to exaggerate, that's a lie. That's just my yeah. point of view. Now I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Aquarius, female members of your family may be difficult to deal with. Put something away in case of an emergency. You must take. You must make a stand on, make them stand on their own feet, regardless of how much you want to make things better for them. Sometimes you got to let the eagle lead the nest, the eaglets. Mm-hmm. The baby's got to lead the nest, y'all. Sometimes you got to let them go. My daughter's leaving. She's left before, though. <laughs> I think this time was a little bit harder because she was grown. We yeah. could chat. When she was a teenager, I was like, get out, go, go ahead, <laughs> gone. She was going to college then, you know, because then she was getting on my nerves. Get on, get ahead, go ahead. Now she's a grown woman. We have conversations. We go to dinner. So it was funny because yeah. when she, um, it was, it's hilarious because when she told me she the was moving, I, yeah, the mm-hmm. connection is different. When she told mm-hmm. me she was moving, I was like, oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Oh my God, that's wonderful, right? When she told me she actually had a place, I was like, I just started crying. She goes, oh my God, if you don't want me to go, I won't go. I was like, no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not going to stop you, but but I'm just over so I was crying like a little girl, y'all. <laughs> I was crying Trust like me, a, I've been there. Yeah. Twice. I was crying like a baby. But, you know, I didn't want her to feel like she couldn't go. I wanted her to feel like she's a grown woman, you know. And my family is just that way. Like, we are like nesting. We're like a nesting family. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so when time for the kids go, we don't, even my brother said right now, they ain't got to go nowhere. And so he, um, he is in a two bedroom <laughs> apartment right now. Cause he said he can't find a house. He's like, this is crazy. The house going to market today is off the market the same day. I said, listen, you're going to have to get a realtor so she can go ahead and slap it up there for you. But anyway, he said to me the other day, he said, oh, my God, I got to hurry and get a house. He said, I got a blow-up mattress in the middle of the floor. When the kids, he said, he said, and my brother is very clean, y'all. He's very clean. He's like, and, you know, they, they're they a little bit messy. I was like, yep, kids, kids, they're a little messy. Because they just, wherever they stop is where stuff stay, right there. And they're grown. But wherever they stop is the plate they eat. Wherever they leave the plate, that's where it stay. When Trey comes over, it's Trey. Like and, most people with kids. Trey, and Trey is really okay. bad. Trey may, Trey, may be, Trey may be better than anybody. Trey would eat and get up and just li- like literally leave the house. I'm like, where's Trey at? The plate stayed right where he left it. So he's really bad. Uh-uh. Yeah, he's no, really bad. I got no maid there, bro. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I, I got to hurry and get a house. Because, you know, in his mind, the kids ain't never got to leave like us. But that's how we are, you know. And it's so funny. I don't know if my brother and like, I like that because it was only two of us. And we all we had. So now it's like we don't want the kids to go anywhere. And they're like, we're grown. We got to right. go. Like, yeah. let go. And it's like four or five of them. And they're like, we got to go. We right. Here. <laughs> like, we got to go. So it's the weirdest thing. I can't even. Some people like, yeah, when they turn 18, they getting out of my house. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. And that's not my brother. That's yeah, not how we that felt. Like, me, these kids are 25, 30 years old. We like, you, do you really have to go? <laughs> like, they grown folks with kids. You know what I'm saying? Do you really have to leave? You know, anyway, Pisces, business and emotional partnerships will run smoothly. You must look into your, into your options. Don't force your opinions on others. Um, don't force your opinions on others. The connections will be short lived. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, fish. We got to look into our options, right? We're not doing that. We're not forcing (laughs) forcing our opinions on anybody. Um, we got to look into our options and business and emotional partnerships going to run smoothly. We accept that. Yeah. We yes, listen, we fish. Do. We're going to accept that business and emotional partnerships are going to run smoothly. I embrace that. Yes. I accept that. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. So that's all the horoscopes I got for you today. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing to bring you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrology, Micah Thyssen. Now, welcome to the stage, the word <laughs> of the week with Georgia Teller. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Sister Audrey. Thank you. I feel like I'm a pet. I'm about to say, when you say that, I feel like I was in church, Sister Audrey. I that, that's what they used to call me at church, y'all. Sister Audrey. And I'm like, yes, here. Yes. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, All right. Where the week? Hi, everybody. Hi, right, Phoenicians out there. Hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Uh, okay, let's see what I got here going on. We have to get together and play some spades, you know? You, you ain't okay. said nothing but a word, <laughs> sister. <laughs> nothing, you know me and spades. Now, y'all know y'all ain't said nothing but a word when you say spades. Spade, my hand is raised. Yes, it is. <laughs> that was good. We'll have to do that. Yes, I played when I was in that. Jersey last That's week. So cool. When I was in Jersey oh, last nice. week, oh, yeah. I had a ball. I had a ball. And Rosa wanted to yeah. quit. She's like, I don't want to play no more. So we won one, they won one. You know, me, I want to I want to play the tiebreaker. She's like, yeah, I'm done. I'm no, like, oh, God, so done? you finished? I'm done. Okay. All right. Okay, then. I ain't going to force it. Oh, my God. We should play that all the time. I just saw you digress by people I know. Hopefully some, somebody's out there waiting for the word of the week. Yeah, go but, ahead. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. Give it to them. Yeah, go ahead. All right. The word of the week is. Oh, okay. Hmm, extraordinary. Ooh. That's a big one. I like that word. I like that word, extraordinary. There's another word I like. Significant, I like, but extraordinary is a cool word. Extraordinary. It really is like it, it, like outstanding, right, in a positive way. Um, you know, doing things that exude confidence and uh, joy and uh, something that's a little bit above the ordinary. You know, it's extraordinary. And um, it could be related to anything that you have. But I kind of, I kind of say it's something like a little superpower. You know what I mean? Something that you do that's extraordinary out of anything else that you do. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I want you to think about what that is for yourself. You know, it may be you may be an extraordinary writer. You know, you may be extraordinary. Like my mom, she was well, not was, but <laughs> she's still here. Thank goodness. Thank she's God. having some serious, some serious issues and stuff. Some serious, you know, health things, uh, challenges going on, and so. Um, it's been a little bit 
I've been struggling with this but, uh, uh, a lot. But um, she was uh, when she was working, she was just really extraordinary in taking care of people. You know, she was one of those, she was a healthcare worker and she loved her job. I mean, she took care of people until she was like 60. I mean, like literally because she couldn't lift them or, you know, help them the way she wanted to. But she was extraordinary in that, you know, and uh, not, not, I mean, I take care of people, but I'm not like extraordinary <laughs> in, being, in being a caregiver. You know, that's not one of my strong suits and stuff. So, you know, uh, just find that little thing that you're extraordinary in. And if you know, if you don't really know what it is or feel it, it's something that, that that uh, that that sings to you, you know. Just take time and write it down. Write the things that you do that are good. You know, write the things down that you do that come easy to you. Those things can be. Those things are extraordinary to you, and we are all extraordinary. We all have something to give. We have something to, you know, to share with with share with people out there. And I think a lot of times when I when I read these words, one thing I can say about the, the words when I when I share them is that they do reveal a lot. So sometimes you'll say a word and you'll say, ah, oh, that's not me. I can't believe that that's me. And that's, and, and that's not a bad thing because it really reveals the things that you need to look inside and find out about yourself. Why we can't believe that we're extraordinary. You know, why we can't believe we have something that is extraordinary or whatever that particular, you know, word is for that week. So not only is it here to help you to, to speak it, to have more positive self-talk about you, it also shows up to reveal things that we don't generally see or talk about who we are. And it gives you an opportunity to look into that for that week and see why you feel that way, why I can't say I'm extraordinary, or really, you know, start to believe that for yourself. So you are extraordinary. I know you guys are doing extraordinary things out there, and I know that you have something extraordinary to give if you aren't already doing that. And you know, and I and I know me or you talk about this all the time. Sometimes you don't see those things for yourself. And so you may just want to ask somebody, you know, what do you feel that I do that's extraordinary? Because sometimes we don't even see those things in ourselves. And that's okay. But if you ask the question, you know, you'll get these amazing <laughs> answers from people and you're like, Wow, I didn't think about that. So today's word I mean this week's word is extraordinary. Why? Because you are extraordinary. That's right. That's the word for the week. That's the word. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what I I realize I'm extraordinary at. I'm extraordinary at coming up with really good ideas. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, and I'm not saying that to brag, but I'm a genius at that. Like I already okay. know. No, you can brag. But it took I mean, me a you know minute I mean? to realize yeah. that. Here's here's the problem though. I want to start everything I come up with. That's the problem. That that would be the problem. And so I have not found a way to pay somebody for my, for somebody to pay me for all the ideas I come. I'm telling y'all, there are so many, like I, I have one I'm working on right now. This one, but this one's going to come to life, but it coincides right with good morning with that. So it's not something extra that's, you know, it's really fun. It's going to be really right. cool, but. Okay. I'm, yeah. Cause you don't want me to text you. You're like, no, you're not doing that. No, 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 no. It's, we talked about it already. You and I already talked about it. So yeah, it's I right. Know. I know. Yeah, because listen, Georgia has me on a um a, a business startup uh, fast. I can't start any other businesses. I'm on a fast right now for the next 12 months. So so she is, she is like, she's providing intervention for me because I am a serious startup addict. I ain't, well, that's, that's a cute title. Ooh, that sound like a title that's or something. Oh. That's the title of book. Ooh, that sound like a, that's not so good. Let me break that down, y'all. But anyway. Write that down. Write it down. I gotta write it down. Um... <laughs> Um, she has me on a fast, so she whenever I had to come, she had to slap me back down. So uh 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 uh, because I'm really bad at that. But I'm I'm really a genius at coming up with great ideas. Like I, mm-hmm. when it comes to like marketing and things like that, I come up with some amazing things. And um, yeah. and some of them should be just marketing. They shouldn't be businesses. They should be just be marketing. I had I do a yeah. consultation called Pick My Brain, and so you can pick my brain. You just pay for the consultation. But you know, people are so funny. They don't. Cause here's the thing. With extraordinary ideas come with, uh, you got to have extraordinary ex- execution. <laughs> so execution, now, right. that, now I will tell you, now I come up with these amazing things, but you got to put some execution behind them. And a lot of times the execution each, is a each killer. Each idea requires, a, you know, a building. You That's know, right. It's like a building block, right? Yes. So you have to still build on that. That's right. And that takes time. That oh takes time. Goodness. So that's, that's right. what I'm not extraordinary well, at. Hmm. Like I'm not extraordinary but, at, 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 at the execution of those things. Um, because they turn right. into businesses for me, which means nothing happens because now I'm overextended and overwhelmed. 
But for a business owner, <laughs> you want to have an extraordinary plan. You want to think outside the yeah. box, you know, and that's my gift. That Thinking outside of the box yeah. and coming up with amazing yeah. ideas for stuff is my gift. And I could do that. Yeah. I could close my eyes and open them and have something like that. That's the crazy part. And I have done it. Yeah. I've talked to people and they're talking about something very general. And as they're talking, mm-hmm. a whole movie script is playing out in my head about things they could be doing. Just like that. And I could spit it back yeah. out to them. They'd be like, oh my God, that's am- <laughs> that's amazing. Right? And But I just, I've never monetized that, which I, because I, I don't know how. Mm-hmm. So if anybody wants to bring me on yeah. their ad team, you know, because you need to have this, these genius ideas, hey, I'm raising my hand. I'm all right with that. You need a marketing, oh, so marketing funny. extraordinaire on your marketing team. Hey, I'm raising my hand because yeah. I just, I haven't it's really figured out how to market. monetize it. I just know that it's there and I yeah. didn't really recognize it as an extraordinary gift until later. I'm talking about way, mm-hmm. way later. Um, but now it's just like, they come to me when I'm quiet, you know, they come to me when people are talking. Like, it's like, it's like visions. I, and I told you that before because you um, did a, um, uh, what was it? What was it? The, the thing you and Kim did last year? I forgot the name of it. The storytelling. Yes. What was it called? Standing your truth. <sighs> Standing your truth. Right. Stand, standing mm-hmm. your truth. So as they were doing a, con- they did a mini conference called Standing Your Truth, and as and I'm watching this on Zoom, and as I'm watching it, all these ideas are just rolling through my head, right? And I'm like, wow, they could do this, they could do that, they could do this, they could do that, and they're just rolling. And this, it, but it becomes like this rolling movie in my mind, and mm-hmm. that's a gift, y'all. That's a God given yep. gift. That ain't something I practice. It just happens like that. Like I didn't go study yeah. that. That's, it just happens like that, you know. My daughter comes to me and she'll shut me down quick. She'll come to me with one little thing, right? One. And by the time she's get finished telling me the story, I got a whole, and she's like, uh-uh, mm-mm-mm. I can't do all that. Mm-hmm. She shut me right she's now. Tired. I can't do all that. I can't do all that. And I'm like, oh, okay. But that that's how, so that's an extraordinary <laughs> gift that God has given me, and I know that's a gift. And so I just haven't figured yeah, out how to monetize it, it yet. So that's the thing. And, and, a, and, all, and a lot of people have those gifts, right? Yeah. They don't look at it that way. Because nope. sometimes... It comes to them so naturally. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I mean, I'm good at helping people see a different way, right? See a different and opposite way of the way that they're looking at things. And, you know, one yep. of my things that I love is, is Wayne Dyer's quotes, right? When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Absolutely. I love that quote. And I live, I, honestly, I really work a lot on living by that. It's yeah. Just a, but I'm so, but it's so easy for me to, you know, to talk to people and have them see something differently, to look at mm-hmm. something differently, you know, that they would have never thought about looking at it that way. And so, but you, but it's something that we do. I don't, I don't, like you said, I don't go to schools after now. I was like, oh, learn, or I'm going to learn to talk to them this way or, or tell them how to do. But a lot of times we, 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 we kind of bypass the things that, that are extraordinary about us, you know, mm-hmm. and even if it's not building a business, but it's about sitting down talking to children. You know what I mean? Right. Getting their attention. My daughter's you know extraordinary I mean? with that. Those things are so great. <sighs> yeah. She's so good with the you kids, know? man. Like I'll tell her, she's the kids mm-hmm. love her, and then she loved the kids. I'm like, oh my god, that was never me. That's why I only had one. Like, no, not me. But she, on the other hand, is really good. She's extraordinary with kids, and kids love her. Yeah. Like they go home and tell their yeah. parents about her. You know. And um, at one point she was going to be a teacher, and I don't know what happened. I think the whole something happened. But anyway, she now she's in tech support. And she does a really good job in that. She's moving up the ladder quickly um, in this in a tech startup. That's, and they gave her, like, all this stock and all this stuff. But that's, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, she's extraordinary with kids, <laughs> right? But I think, I don't know what happened, but I look at the kids. They love her, and they go home and tell their parents about her. And then the parents love her because the kids love her, you know? when people, I don't care what nobody <laughs> say. When your kids love somebody, you normally love them. Yeah. Because you love your kids. And so... You know, we all have extraordinary gifts about us. I think sometimes we don't yeah. recognize them. Or you could be like me. You recognize you have. You just don't know how to make it work for you. I have, I've not I've not figured out how to make my gift work for me outside of starting a business. And I don't want to start another business. So I don't know how to make it work. If you, if, listen, if you want to do a, 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 a pick my brain session for 90 minutes, holler at your girl. We can set that up. It's going to charge you now. And it's going to cost you. It's not going to be free. Cause I got to make money from that. Now you're going to probably make millions. I'm probably gonna make a few hundred dollars unless you give me some stock. <laughs> unless you give me some stock in the company. And I still, you still got to pay me that, that three ninety seven, but that 90 minutes. And then I need like five shares after that. Cause you're going to make millions. If you, if you got a good execution plan, I'm just going to say that. I was going to say. Got to have a plan. Say that, right? Executed. Got to be executed. Yeah. All right, listen, I'm going to a song. I'll be back after the song to give you. 
Ooh, some information about what's going on in Gwinnett County. I know y'all. I know. I get y'all news from around the world and business and all that good stuff. We'll be back though. Stay tuned. Everybody's been saying that you're up to no good. Everyone has been telling me that you got me hood. You're playing it big time. You're feeding me lies. Everyone has been bugging me to sever the ties. But I would never, ever, ever would have believed them. No reason. Sometimes the truth is hard to see. But now the never, ever, ever seem to be over. I saw it. So I'm happy I got freed. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh -oh. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. You weren't nice, but now I am telling you, I'm going to smile. But I would never, ever, ever would have believed them, no reason. Sometimes the truth is hard to see. But now the never, ever, ever seems to be over, I saw her. So I'm happy I got freed. Lucky, lucky, lucky me. Uh -oh. Lucky, lucky, lucky me I won, got it done Lucky, lucky, lucky me Uh-oh Lucky, lucky, lucky I won't let the door hit when I leave I guess that I was born beneath the very lucky star And in a week or two I won't remember who you are Man down He ran out of luck and now he Time. Ain't no looking back, I'm on the right track Here she goes Lucky, lucky, lucky me uh -oh. Lucky, lucky, lucky me I won, got it done Lucky, lucky, lucky me uh -oh. Lucky, lucky, lucky Welcome back. So listen, guys, let's get into some news you can use about what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. So, you know, a few weeks ago, they opened up the uh, Gwinnett Place Mall um, as a mass COVID vaccination center, and it has been doing wonders. I got my first shot over there, and I'm going to get the second shot on April the 1st. But now that they have opened it up to more people, um, starting up to age 55, a lot more people have gone over there. So they said they did that. They opened it up, and 14,000 slots got filled up instantly. I know I've been trying to get a second shot for my my uncle and i'm just having the hardest time because now it's opening up to people 55 and older mm -hmm. and so now those slots are filling up i was able to get it because you know i'm a caregiver because otherwise mm -hmm. i wouldn't have been and i still wouldn't be able to get it if even if um it did open up to 55 i still wouldn't be able to get it but i got it because i was his caregiver and he's 67 and he has a whole lot of things going on uh, medically um but you know they're saying that in the state right now they're trying to do three million i think it's three million shots a, a day a week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But but that's gonna help us, y'all. That's gonna help us get back to yeah. life. And I'm looking so forward to getting back to life and living life. I really am. Um but yeah, I but do my, check my second one tomorrow. All right, right. So JJ get her and so you got it over at Gwinnett Place Mall too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are afraid to take it. Now here's the thing. I don't know what the long term effect is gonna be. I really don't, right? But after losing my mom, I guess it's just a chance I'm going to have to take because I know she was diehard set on getting that shot and she didn't get a chance. And I know she would want nothing more than for, for me and my family to get that shot. So we all got it. When I say my family, I'm talking about my daughter and the kids. Everybody got the shot um, because that's what she would want. And after we lost her, it was like, well, well yeah, we might want to get this shot. You know what I'm saying? Um, and mm -hmm. we went to Gwinnett Place Mall. And when I went, it was a smooth. It was smooth. Like I sat in my car yeah. when it was 15 minutes to my uh, minutes before my appointment, I got in line. They came and called my timeout, and we just went in the building. 
Um, mm-hmm. Answered a couple of questions, went over, got the shot. Sat down. I had to sit down for 30 minutes because I'm allergic to morphine. So most people sit mm-hmm. down for 15 minutes. I sat for 30 minutes. It, it moved really well. My husband, he went yeah. late in the evening. It was a lot more people in the evening slot. So it took a little bit longer. But it took me a good 45 mm-hmm. minutes for the whole process. And um, I, I didn't feel sick or anything. I did have my arm. My arm was sore. It was sore with a shot. Actually, they actually gave me the needle. And it was also sore up under my arm, which is kind of crazy. And it itched. Like, it itched like crazy. But I didn't scratch it. But I really wanted to scratch it. But I didn't scratch it. Um, and then it just went away. You know, my brother, on the other hand, he had some other symptoms. He had, like, flu-like symptoms. So, like, for one day, literally. And then the next day, he was fine. Um, so... You know, right now they're they're vaccinating a lot of people, and you know that's where our one of our main locations are. And we, you know, they want to get everybody vaccinated so we can, you know, we don't know what it's gonna be like, right? All we know is we need. If you want to get it, get it. Some people just say they're never gonna get it. Like if we all get it, and why should they get it? Okay, that's fine, right? But not everybody's <laughs> gonna get it. So you right. you still run the risk, right? You still run the risk, and that and that's totally your choice, totally your choice. I'm not trying to push my opinion because I hard school said don't <laughs> on anyone today. I'm just saying, you know, my family has gotten it, and we're gonna get our second dose pretty soon. Um, right now, over at Gwinnett Place Mall, and that's right where the old series used to be. Um, the staff can handle up to three thousand people a day at that location. That's a lot of people, y'all. So three thousand people a day. That's a great thing. So. You know, if you are, now here's the thing, trying to get an appointment. Like, I'm on all kind of lists trying to get my uncle that second shot. I'm just going to have to call his, his, um, I'm just going to have to call his doctor. Like, listen, I can't find the second shot. You know, she the one got it for him. And so he got the first shot, but we can't find the second shot because the place we got the first shot at, they don't have the, they don't have it. Now, he didn't have any, he didn't have any, um, he didn't have any, um, symptom he's like no nah, i feel fine i think he says his arm might have been so i don't even remember him saying that though yeah i didn't either yeah i didn't either i didn't have anything yeah anything. see we'll this but that was it so long term we have no idea here's the thing if it works long time thank god if it messes up up long term oh well this is what it's gonna be <laughs> i'd rather take that chance long term than right this minute let me just say that anyway if you are trying to you know um there are uh, officials that the people are looking for ways to get the shot and you can go online. You can register, um, online at different places. I, I just think the problem is, is just, it is, it's going to be long line. Like I've tried Publix. I've tried Kroger's. I've tried the, the health department. It's just a lot. Anyway, they're going to be speaking about this. They're going to be speaking about this on March the 24th from eight to nine 30, which to get your questions answered. Um, the Gwinnett County Department of Health is going to be talking about this. So if you want to check that out, go to AJC.com under local, pull up Gwinnett, and you'll see the story there. If you scroll down to the bottom of the story, you're going to say information on how to register for the live stream that's going to be taking place. And this is going to be on March the 24th. So the speaker is going to be Dr. Audrey Arona. She's the CEO of District Health, the director. Um, she is also the, the, the director of Gwinnett Newton and Rockdale County Health Departments. Also in attendance at, on that event is going to be Jennifer Hybert, and she's the CEO of Viewpoint Health. Um, Georgia Peacock, Chief Medical Officer, um, Department of Georgia Department of Public Health. Dr. Brian Williams, CEO of Four Corners Primary Care. So they're all going to be on this on this call on the 24th to answer questions. For more information, go to AJC.com, click on local, click on Gwinnett, scroll down, you'll see the story. Click the story and then scroll down through the story. I mean, if you want to get it, get it. If you don't, don't get it. That's all, you know. Um, all Gwinnett students will learn digitally tomorrow. They're going to be at home. I know some parents are not happy to hear that. They're like, ooh. If, if, see how quiet it is, y'all? My grandbaby is not home today. And my daughter. <laughs> so, yeah. So, that's why it's so quiet. Like, you, it's so funny. And do, and I'm going to I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be in, a, in a position where, again, that it's going to be real quiet. Like when I had my studio, I'm not there yet because things are still shut down kind of much, some, somewhat. But anyway, I will be there soon. But it was so funny because my daughter said, well, you don't, you won't have any distractions today because the baby's not here. She's not here this morning, y'all. She's not here. My daughter has a bereavement day for her grandfather um, and the baby's with her father. So it's quiet. I could do the show. I ain't got to worry about nobody busting in on me, screaming outside the door, all kind of stuff. My husband texts me. He's like, uh, Audrey. We hear the baby. I was like, I know. There's nothing I can do about it right now. And I know for some people they're saying that is crazy. But I feel like I'm I'm like, you know what you call like um 
it is. Like, that's what it is. It is. But do you know how you call like customer service and they tell you right on the recording, like, you may hear background noise. That's because our workers are working remotely from home. So if you hear a dog barking, a car driving by, or someone crying in the background, please accept our apologies in advance. That's what I have to say I now. I've never heard that. that yes. So Girl, I've been on customer service, and that's what it says. It's like, we're going to make this apology right up front because you may hear any of that stuff because our representatives are working from home. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And you know what? When they say that, all you can say is okay because we all working from home pretty much. So yeah, it's like a okay, yeah. But anyway, the students, <laughs> students in Gwinnett County is gonna be working from home tomorrow. I know the parents are not happy about that, but it's gotta you know. <laughs> so students work independently on assignments from their computers, and they will not have real time classes with teachers. So the teachers are off, but the parents are on because <laughs> the kids gonna be at working at home. <laughs> Ooh, I know y'all not worried about that. Yeah, so they got said about 55% of the 177,000 students in Gwinnett County come to school in person on days that are not fully digital. That's a lot of kids. So there's still a lot of kids that are sitting home. So the parents, the children will be home with you tomorrow. Just sorry. Just had to tell you that. I know they're like, oh, God, not again. Wasn't they just here the weekend? I know that's hilarious, y'all. I know. I know it is. Um, the Little Barn City Council recently voted unanimously to approve Victor Lukens' plan to build a 12,000 square foot tire and accessory store and service center at the at the uh, 710 Indian Trail Road. Now, why is that important? Because that means jobs. That's why that's important. You know, that means the economy is getting a boost. That means that somebody got enough money to open up a business in Gwinnett County. That means that you need to make sure that you got the skills to get the jobs once they start hiring. That's what that means. Yep. So Luke, Lucan, owner of the existing Global Tires at 621 Indian Trail, uh, Little Burn Road, is ready to expand his business to a new location and add autom- automotive accessory shop to include wheels, tires, stereo equipment, lift kits, in addition to auto and truck services. So if you are in that space, if that's the space you love, make sure that your skills are tight and also so you can go and apply for the job. You want to make sure that you're marketable, right? That's what you want to make sure. The city also approved the request with conditions including landscaping guidelines, services limited to wheels and tires, lift kits, and related accessory installation, body work, paint repair, any other services outside of that are they're prohibited. So they can't do any of that stuff. But they can go in there and de- they can go in there and put some 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 banging music in your car probably. Yeah, your car could be bumped and put on some new tires and rims. My daughter said, you know, she bought a Mercedes. When she bought the Mercedes, I think she bought it in October. And she said she was getting some purple brake pads put on i was like why so you can see it through the rims but it sounds pretty she said purple brake pads i was like oh that's pretty cool but then so you can see brake pads pads. so if you see certain it depends on the tire that you get i think so she getting the tires with the black rims and then you can see the purple brake pads oh okay yeah what I'm thinking of some work I know, right? Pass, okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, Lil Burn is gonna have a new okay. uh new big a bigger global tires there, and that means more jobs for the for the residents and those in Gwinnett County. Make sure your skills are tight, make sure your resume is tight, make sure you can fill in all the gaps, make sure you can pass a background check, make sure you got the proper ID <laughs> and all of that stuff. And when they open up the new t- listen, if I were you, I would go down the street right now to six ten. What's the address down at the other place? I go down there right now, put my application in 621. All right, so listen, if you want to work at a new shop that's going to be located at 710 Indian Trail Road, go down to the shop that's down there now. Talk to the owner. He's located at 621 Indian Trail Lilburn Road. I guess, is that the same address? But anyway, it's a 621 Indian Trail Lilburn Road. Go down there and talk to them how you can get a job. They need, they're going to need customer service people. They're going to need people to walk around the store and help folks buy stuff. They're going to need people to help put the tires on. Go down the street now. And put your application in right now. Don't wait. Don't wait. All right. All right. So listen, let me just say this before I go to my last song. Because I heard so many stimulus jokes over the weekend. People were, <laughs> I'm talking about crazy. Somebody call it Saint. Let, let me see if I find this when they sent me. I thought it was hilarious. And it may not be funny to you, but it was funny to me. I, and I was cracking up when I saw it. My daughter sent it to me. Did she send it to all of us? Let me see. It, listen. Second, 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 Saint, Saint, how's she? Second, Timothy, Timothy, not Timothy, Timothy, <laughs> chapter two, verse 1400. And he checketh, 
and he checked it and it was not there. So, so she's, <laughs> oh God, when I saw that, I was rolling. It was so many memes going around about the Simmons at second Timothy ver- chapter two, verse 1400. And he checked it and it was not there. So people, people checking for their symptoms. It was not there. When I saw that, I was crying. I was oh like, my oh my God. God. It was so many memes going around about the stimulus package. And then and my husband, my yeah. husband said at his job, now these are people that go to work y'all. He said they were trying to do, I guess a project. And I guess his supervisor was like, look, don't even try to do the project. Stimulus checks coming out. These people getting paid this week. Ain't nobody coming to work to do no project. It was hilarious. I was like, yeah, you probably right though. He's like, nobody was trying to go to work on the weekend. They didn't have to. They got paid and the stimulus money was coming out. They was like, yeah, we ain't going. We not going to go. And so she had to go to her boss and share that information with the, with the boss. Like, yeah, I don't think we should, I don't think we should schedule this project this weekend because people not going to show up for this job to do this project on the weekend. It's the weekend and they load it. Yeah, it ain't going to happen, which is hilarious. And I was like, I saw so many funny memes about the stimulus package. So you just had to laugh because- you know, people have been, and, they, and you need to laugh. You know what I'm saying? We need to laugh, y'all. It's so yeah. much sad. It, it has been so much sadness over the last year. Just to laugh is is good for you. It's good for you. So that was um, that was funny. But anyway, I'm going to my last song, and I'll be back out to give you my word of inspiration for the day. So stay tuned. <laughs> I could say I was finally over you But that's not the truth mm-hmm. Everyone always keep falling in love again The fuck's wrong with them? I don't understand Maybe it will pass by Someone save me for a pass out I'm too lonely to be done I'm a drink at this place guys that's all i got for today but before i go i want to um i want to give you my word of inspiration for today here goes 
The real measure of wealth is how much you'd be worth if you lost all your money. Um, Bernard Metzer said that, and he was right. What's what's your what's what's real wealth? You know, I think about I think about Marvin. Um, when I think about that, he did a lot of good work after boxing. You know, he boxed, he fought, he took some bumps and bruises, but he did a lot of good work after that, and people loved him for for years and years and years after he left the arena. I met him in 1990, 1990, yeah, 1990, and um. I remember when I first met him because I, I was so I was so enamored that I was standing in front of Marvin Hagler because I had seen him in the ever remember the Everbury commercial G where you he's mm-hmm. I dare you to knock this battery off my shoulder. Yes, yes. So I had a crush on him as a young girl looking at that commercial, and then I meet him in person. I'm like holy shit, this is really Marvin Hagler standing in front of me, and I remember meeting him and feeling like wow, like I'm I'm talking to Marvin Hagler, and but his but but my daughter's dad is so humble. Like, he never bragged. I didn't know who he was. I was dating him, knew his last name, probably about four to five months before I really knew who he, who he really was because he never talked about him. He never he never talked about him. And it was only when I met my dad's great-grandmother and we went in her house and she had a picture and I'm standing there and I wonder do he remember this because this is when I realized who the hell he really was. And I'm looking like, and then it hit me. Wait a minute. <laughs> And it was the craziest because he never, he never, he's so humble. Like, if you met him, he's one of the most humble people in the world. Like, you wouldn't even know who he was. He lives a regular life. He doesn't live the life of a rock star. He's really regular. And it, I had probably dated him four or five months before I really knew who he really was. I knew his name, right? Didn't ring a bell because he's so mm-hmm. humble. Because, you know, in my mind, and this is how my mind works, if your name is Rockefeller, then you you, you doing like Rockefeller do. And honestly, people, they're not people out there. Everybody's not like that. You know, and he's, he wasn't like that. His name was Hagler, but he was very humble and he's very low key. And so I walked in his great grandmother's house and she was a sweetheart. And I'm looking at the wall and Marvin pictures on the wall and it hit me. Wait a minute. Who, who are these people? And I said to him, is that your father? And he's like, yeah, four or five months, y'all. I had no clue. <laughs> No clue. And then he then he introduced me to him. But I gotta tell you, Marvin and he doesn't and I and I and I and I'm so sad I never got a chance to tell him this. I talked about this before and hopefully when he heard it somewhere, but it was him who showed me how black folk could really live. Um when I went to first of all, well, the first time I met him, I went to a hotel in Boston and that's the first time I met Kay and Kay had went to Neiman Marcus to buy some shampoo. And so I'm from, I'm from Newark. He, Marvin is from Newark, but you know, he, he had moved past Newark at this point. He was Marvin, this is Marvin Hagler at that point. And she went to Neiman Marcus to buy shampoo. And in my mind, I'm never going to forget this. Cause I was thinking you went to Neiman Marcus to get shampoo. Why did you just go to Rite Aid? It's right down the street. This is what I'm thinking. And I think I said that to her and she said she didn't know. <laughs> But it was it was he who showed me what hard work could be. It was he who showed me what wealth could be. But it was me that learned that money is not always wealth. I learned that. He showed me what the good life was. I remember he flew my he flew my my um he flew me and Gentry to to Jamaica. It was me, Gentry, his brother, and his girlfriend. He flew the, he flew the four of us to Jamaica. For eight days, the limousine picked us up, took us to the plane. We got on a plane. We flew to Jamaica for eight days. I'm never going to forget this because he's the one who showed me what black folk had. Because I had never been around rich black people before. Didn't know what they looked like. I had never seen it until I met him. I remember going to the house where he lived before he got a divorce. And his ex-wife still lived there. And his name was in tile in the bottom of the pool. And I looked in the pool and I said to him, is that your father's name in the pool? And he was like, yeah, he was, when I tell y'all Gentry is super humble, super humble. And he was, he was just really humble. He's like, really, he grew up in that. So it was nothing to him, him, me like, what the, is that his name? His name was in the bottom of the pool. And I was like, and they had a sauna, Georgia, in the house. And I was like, <laughs> this is amazing. What is that? Like, I was, I was amazed, but he was the one that showed me what black folk could really accomplish if they put their mind to it. And 
I remember going to the house in New Hampshire, and I remember coming out my bedroom and standing on the balcony from my bedroom, and there's a stream running right outside the bedroom. And I'm looking like, this is... And so the house and the cabin, you know, you always hear me say, I want to own a lake house, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the first time I experienced the lake house. I'm, I'm, at, the, I'm at his house in New Hampshire, and I walk out my bedroom, and there's a stream right outside the window off the balcony. So... He was the one, and I, and I never got a chance to tell him this. I wish I had. Now, here's the thing. This, this is the other thing. Tell people what you wanted them to know why they're still here, because I never got a chance to Amen tell them to that, her. you know. Um, but what I also learned on my own was that money is not everything. It's the people around you. It's the love that you get. It's the appreciation. And sometimes we forget to tell the people that, that's, that's got our back, the people that's that's there for us, that we love them. You know, we sometimes we take them for mm-hmm. granted. Sometimes we forget to tell them we appreciate them. So what I what I charge you to do right now is to tell somebody that you love them. Tell somebody you appreciate them. Tell somebody that freaking thank you. Thank you for the little things. You know what I mean? The little things get taken for granted too because that's real wealth. Yep, that's true. That's real wealth. That's all I got for you today. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you spent the last hour and five minutes eight minutes actually with me and i appreciate you and love you to life for that thank you georgia for giving us the word of the week if you miss any so episode happy. of the show please go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there and also be sure to follow me on facebook at goodmorninggwinnett follow me on instagram at goodmorninggwinnett and follow me on the twitter at goodmorninggwinnett and if you like the show and you listen to it on apple Podcasts, find your favorite two episodes and give it five stars i appreciate you and love you to life for that if you want to listen to it in your home Listen to it on Alexa. Just say, Alexa, open Good Morning Gwinnett, and she will play the latest episode of the show. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing. Listen, go to Good Morning Gwinnett, click on, the, click on the shop button. I put up some new apparel like our spring line, the Good Morning Gwinnett spring line. It's cute, y'all. It's cute. Go check it out. Go to goodmorninggwinnett.com. Click on shop. You're going to see our new spring line. It is really cute. I got a shirt up there called Make It a Great Day. Oh, I love that shirt so much. I just ordered it. I can't wait to get it. Because y'all know that's my thing. At the end of every show, Make It a Great Day. I put that in my blog post and everything. So to support this show and to help me keep it going, please go to goodmorninggwinnett.com and click on the shop button. Pick up something from my spring line. I even got socks there. I don't know who's wearing socks in the spring, but you can have a Good Morning Gwinnett sock. And it's a map. It's a map of Gwinnett on the shirts and it has a good morning Gwinnett logo on it's really cute I'm, I'm so proud of myself I was like oh look at that it's so cute <laughs> I'm so proud of myself but anyway to support the show please go to goodmorninggwinnett.com click the shop button purchase something from the store and that's going to help me keep doing what I do and keep bringing you news and entertainment every morning Monday through Thursday 10 a.m. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing stay safe out there kiss your people y'all life can be short life can be short kiss your people tell them you love them tell them you appreciate them Tell them something you you didn't you you've been meaning to tell them. Tell them today. I wish I could have told Marvin that he was my inspiration as well, but I did not get my chance. And I know he's in heaven with my mom. And truly missed. And again, my condolences goes out to the family. And um, keep us all in prayer, y'all. I'll be back again at tomorrow at ten a.m. God willing. Thank you, Georgette, again. Welcome, sis. Until next time, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Make it a great day. Bye now. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.